So it looks now that Fred's really deteriorating. How do you decide whether he's actually in the last few days of his life? I think we, we think and consider about how he's been previously. Yeah. So that contact that we've had uh, with Fred and Vera over a period of time yeah. means that we get to know how he's been and how he is now. I think we put that in the context of his condition and the information we have available for that. And then we look at his functional decline, his uh, level of drowsiness, his level of ability to be able to take medication, mm. uh, his conscious awareness, uh, and also to talk to him and Vera about where they see things up to, because actually they may have mm. um, a clarity that actually they will understand that time is now short in yeah. themselves. Yeah, and so at that point we'd be thinking about anticipatory drugs? Yeah, so I think in that moment where we are considering uh, recognition yeah. that somebody may be entering the last days of life, we are excluding reversible causes or reversible causes that we're able to treat mm -hmm. and that we're seeing this as an irreversible, uh, progressive moment leading to this, to Fred's last days of life, then we're thinking about the five priorities of care around that. So that's around uh, recognition, but it's then around communicating that with Fred and with Vera yeah. about where we see things up to and to talk to them about. To involve them in decision making and in planning, mm. to support Vera, and then to plan our care. One element of that planning of care is around having the right medication yeah. available for Fred. Yeah. So we would be considering the common symptoms that people experience at the very end of their lives. Yeah. So that is pain and breathlessness and sickness, potentially agitation and potentially upper airway secretions yeah. 